Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Andrew McCart, IFL TV. I'm out here in Saudi Arabia. Delighted to be joined by Mark Chamberlain. Mark, what better place to have a, an interview in the sun? Somebody's doing archery behind you there. First time in Saudi Arabia, man. How are you finding it? Yeah, all well, good. Um, like I said before, it's uh, I've had worse fight weeks. Could be worse. I mean, it's nice just sitting in the sun, relaxing and getting things done, really. Obviously, let's talk about the fight itself then. Uh, you've got up against Gavin Gwynn. Um, Tough, tough, tough as they come, one of them fighters. You know, I looked at your record, but you're quite a, a knockout artist, so to speak. So when we look at Gavin Gwynn's style and sort of like your style, we're in for a treat, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, Gavin Gwynn, he, he hasn't done it the easy way. Um, take my hat off to him, and he, he's won quite a lot in in the uh, boxing, obviously British, Commonwealth, European. I wouldn't say he's had a hard career, but he definitely hasn't fought anyone like me yet, that's for sure. It was for the EBU title. We spoke a little bit off camera here about the title that was on the line. Uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, the EBU title, which was held by Gavin, was on the line. But obviously, now it's not. You mentioned there it was a WB international, which is good. It gets you up in them them rankings, which is obviously the ultimate goal for you is sort of like the world title or world title shot at some stage in your career. So happy with that? The WB on the line? W yeah, I'll be honest with you. When I got the call, I was just grateful to fight in Saudi Arabia. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I would have fought King Kong. I don't care what it was for. I just like to be out here and new experience. Um, but yeah, the aim is keep winning, keep climbing the rankings. Uh, the EBU would have been nice, but WBA internationals fine with me. Um, just keep winning, and then hopefully pick up a new title on Friday night. You spoke about being out in Saudi Arabia, and you're happy to be out here. And obviously, I'm guessing you've seen the fights that they've produced out here in the last events with the Fury and Ganus and obviously the one before Christmas there, the Joshua Wallen and Parker and uh, Wilder. So you obviously watch these events and you've seen them on TV, but now you're a part of it. So talk to me about the excitement that you've got and the show that you're going to bring on Friday night. Yeah, definitely. Obviously being part of it, it's great. Um, His Excellency has done amazing things for boxing and brought it all back to life. Um, not only just having one like big main event, but putting big names on one card. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it 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 doesn't feel real to be part of it, like seeing it and the the Riyadh season and talks of uh, other people and that being on the card, but being part of it is just something else, and I can't thank them enough for getting me on it. It's called Knockout Chaos. Like I said to you, you're 14 and all with 10 knockouts. Uh, knockout Chaos. Mark Chamberlain knockout. Can we read too much? Is that going to happen? Is that what we're hoping for? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great name for the card. They like say 14 and 0, 10 knockouts. A knockout would be lovely. Uh, great performance as well. Uh, but it's got to be set up right. So I won't be going out there all guns blazing looking for a knockout. But I truly believe that I'm well capable of being able to produce it on the night, that's for sure. Obviously, you're on a, probably the biggest card that you've been on in your, in your career with the guy likes of Zhili Zhang and Parker and, and Ganu and, and Joshua. So it'd be remiss of me not to get your thoughts in it, not just as a fighter, but as a boxing fan. When you look at two giant men, you've probably seen them passing about here in Joshua and Ganu. You've sized them up yourself. They're, they're, they're units. Um, like I said, it's called knockout chaos. <laughs> What's going to happen in that fight? Have you got a, sort of an opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's great. Like Obviously, we're all in the same sort of uh, villas, apartments as such, and walking around, you're seeing all these big names. Um, <clears throat> obviously, like, growing up as a kid doing boxing and seeing their names on the TV, even going to watch Joshua and Wembley and actually being on an undercard, it just feels unreal, if you know what I mean. Um, but, yeah, they are all very big men, and no doubt it's going to live up to the name, the knockout chaos, that's for sure. You said there that you, you went to Joshua's face at Wembley and now you're fighting on his undercard. Did, let's take me back to that time when you were at Wembley then, or were you up in the, sort of like the, the gods, so to speak, and did you ever envision that you'd be in Saudi Arabia fighting on a Joshua undercard in a massive event like this? Definitely didn't think that, no. I mean, I, I was there with my mates. I can't remember who he fought on the night, um, but I just remember being sat in the crowd as a fan. Uh, this was before I turned professional, and here we are now, five... Five and a half years later in Riyadh on his undercard. And yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for it. Josh, are going to do it then? Is Josh going to knock Ngannou up? Because like I said, I think I don't think this is going 12 rounds. I think they, they hit too hard and sort of the, the way they, they both approach the game, they're going to get hit at some point. Is it a case of first one who lands, wins the fight, and do you think it will be Joshua? 
Yeah, I mean, Ngannou's incap- he's capable because obviously we've seen what he could do against Fury. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't think Fury put a dent in him. Obviously, people were uh, um and an R and who'd won the fight. I mean, a, a draw wouldn't have been a bad shout, but the man was at, at his debut against like the lineal world heavyweight champion and he held his own, I guess. Uh, but I think my prediction will be Joshua with a stoppage. I don't know if he'll knock him out, um, but I think he'll get to him, yeah. Back to you then, obviously, Gavin Gwynn. I've known Gavin quite a long time. Um, I've been to loads of his fights. I've seen how he approaches the game. He's got that Mexican style. He, he called himself the Murtha Tidwell Mexican or something along them lines. So he's going to bring it. He's going to come forward. He's going to be on your chest this whole whole fight. Are you happy with that? Are you excited about that? And is that what you want from Gavin Gwynn? Yeah, definitely. I want the, the best Gavin Gwynn to turn up because... I've trained hard for it. I'm well prepared. He seems to think it's too soon for me, but put yourself in my shoes, in my position. No doubt he would have wanted this fight when vice versa, if you know what I mean, if he was in my shoes. So, yeah, I want want to test myself and I'm up for a challenge. So, yeah, bring what you got. If you win, would you come back? I will be winning and I will be coming back. Listen, Mark, absolute pleasure to speak to you, my man. And uh, no doubt we'll see you tonight at the... Uh, fighters Arrival I think it's Fighters Welcome Fighters Arrival yeah. tonight I'll see you grand there arrival. Yeah Grand Arrival So I'll see you there And uh, listen Enjoy the, the sunshine Do a little bit of ping pong A little bit of archery yeah. behind you And uh, until then I'll see you in the next one Thank you Cheers mate Cheers mate Thanks Mark Thank you Wall Street Memes Casino I'm fine And Sportsbook